Welcome to today's special eFolder and OpenDNS webinar. Today's topic is how we minimize risk, an eFolder and OpenDNS partner testimonial. This webinar presents a partner's perspective on how to improve client security and productivity. Today we are joined by Dima Kumitz, Senior Product Manager at OpenDNS, and Matt Henderson, President of Litzia. Let's look at, at today's agenda. First, we will discuss the threats that your clients face, including shadow IT and the risk of consumer-grade file sync services. We will then move on to how clients can leverage eFolder and OpenDNS to address these threats and increase their clients' productivity. Finally, we will hear from Matt Henderson, President of Litzia, and hear how he has minimized risk for his clients by partnering with eFolder and OpenDNS. Now let me introduce today's guest. Dima Kumitz is Senior Product Manager for OpenDNS, uh, and he's, he's, pardon me, he's Senior Product Manager for OpenDNS's Managed Service Provider Security Offering, Umbrella for MSPs. Dima has been working in technology for over 20 years with expertise in security, IT services, and emerging technologies. He is a frequent presenter at technology conferences and recently won Best Breakout Session for his security talk at IT Nation 2014. Dima, welcome. Thanks so much, Ted. Okay, and Matt Henderson founded Litzia in 2005. His love of technology began at the age of 10 with his first computer and continued with a BS in management information systems from Western Washington University. Matt has worked as a Microsoft certified consultant to businesses for over 20 years. Litzia feeds Matt's passion for technology by combining it with a desire to help people. Matt sits as Litzia's representative member in HTG 10 one of 25 HDG peer groups worldwide. Um, Dima and Matt, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about your firm and what okay. you guys focus on? Sure. Uh, let's use a mid-market MSP out of Bellingham, Washington, in the northwest tip here. Um, our primary business focuses on uh, reoccurring relationships. Uh, reoccurring revenue, and emerging technology solutions for our customers. Um, we were early adopters of Office 365, and um, we're continuing to develop our solutions around cloud and um, beyond just the email components. And this is where OpenDNS and eFolder fit into our entire stack. Okay, great. And what kind of uh, clients do you focus on? Uh, manufacturing and distribution, frequently we find that due to our geographic location, our clients are dispersed in many different uh, areas of the country. Okay. Well, great. We're looking forward to um, hearing about your, your case studies um, and how you've deployed um, both of these um, solutions together. So with that, I'm going to hand, uh, give Dima keyboard and mouse control. Great. Thanks, Ted. So when we think about the threats customers face, there have really been a number of changes over the last couple of years. And when we look at the threatscape, the most profound one facing service providers and partners is the targeting of SMBs. Um, due to the growing threatscape and the decrease in cost of becoming a bad actor, SMBs are now over 41% over of all targeted attacks as opposed to most of the attacks going after large organizations in the past. In addition, SMBs are 15 times more likely to be breached. And this is really where partners such as Litzia and MSPs can come in to help to protect the customers, decrease the risk of infection, and make sure that they have proactive security as opposed to just incident response. And when we look at the actual risks going on and the changes in how we work, it's really the fact that signatures and humans aren't staying ahead of advanced attacks. So when you look at signature-based security such as AV and your traditional UTMs, they're too slow to respond. Customers are infected and encrypted or damaged before the signature gets updated. And as people leave the network with their laptops, they're also no longer being protected by the appliances and firewalls inside their office. And as Matt said, um, Office 65 and other cloud applications are making it possible for people not to have to VPN in to 
to do their work, which means that they're, once again, walking naked. Um, the last thing, and the thing that we're really going to focus on in this webcast, is the issue with shadow IT. And that's where well-meaning employees deploy cloud applications, typically consumer-grade applications, and do this without notifying their MSP or IT or oftentimes even their manager. And eFolder has some really great information on both what is going on in this space and how it's potentially putting customers at risk. Yeah, I mean, I think probably, thanks, Dima, the, I think one of the you know, biggest trends we're seeing today is that uh, consumer-grade um, sync services, file sync services, have really you know, become widely adopted in the workplace. Um, you know, consumers usually discover something like Dropbox um, through uh, you know, very simple use cases that really usually involve like trying to get large files uh, to a family member, say like a whole batch of photos for your aunt or something like that. And they discover a technology like Dropbox, which allows you to send large files, sync things to the cloud. Um, and, you know, and they discover how easy it is to use, and of course the light bulb goes off and goes, wow, this is a, this is, I could use this technology uh, you know, in my day-to-day -day work to be more productive because either I'm tired of VPNing into the file server or I'm, I'm tired of, uh, I, you know, my company hasn't provided me any sort of technology like this, so, uh, well, heck, I'm going to install Dropbox on my work machine and sync a bunch of uh, company data uh, to my home PC so I can get a little bit more work out of the day, day extend, be a little bit more productive when I'm on the go, um, and I'm going to do that to a home PC um, or to my mobile devices. And the challenge with this, of course, is that this introduces massive risks for businesses. Um, you know, nobody, I mean, nobody really enjoys a fully, fully, fully locked down um, type PC experience, but on the other hand, business owners um, today are really vulnerable to these consumer grade file sync solutions. When um, an employee either abruptly quits or um, is perhaps fired or, or laid off or something like that, if, if they've been running a consumer grade file sync solution on their uh, work PC and have synced that data off to uncontrolled devices and mobile devices and tablets, you know, a business can run the risk of their intellectual property, their client lists, financial data, other sensitive data like medical data or patient data or, or client data can be compromised and lost um, when employees, you know, somewhat innocently in many cases, use consumer-grade sync technology to try to be more productive. And so the real the challenge is today, we see this really out there today, that like the pendulum has swung way, way too far in one direction. Um, and security and productivity are always two trade-offs, and we've really got to swing that pendulum back and help businesses of all sizes deal with the risks of data theft, data loss, corruption or loss of their data, and the various legal um, and compliance issues that come to the fore if you allow um, employees in the workplace to use something like a consumer-grade sync solution. So really, I mean, today's uh, discussion is all around how can partners, how can partners, um, uh, you know, how can partners um, address the risk of shadow IT. Um, you know, how can you go out there and make sure that um, your clients and their employees are productive, A, but that you can, you know, put in place business grade technology that is secure and controllable and has the same ease of use properties that the workforce wants and needs, um, but to get to get back a measure of security and control of the IT environment. And so, you know, with today's um, solutions, um, with, with, with technology like OpenDNS and eFolder, partners are out there able to go out there and identify problematic um, cloud applications um, and other, you know, workforce behaviors that are putting data privacy at risk. Um, and you're able to weed those out utilizing the tools at your disposal. With a tool like OpenDNS, you not only can get visibility into the cloud applications that are being used, but you can use the robust security feature set in a network-based security solution to, you know, control what applications are actually permitted to flow through the gateway firewall or router inside your client um, networks. 
And then what's more is really you should think about this as a huge revenue opportunity. Um, every time you improve this, as an MSP, in my view, every time you improve the security for your clients, it's an opportunity to boost your revenues and decrease your costs. You know, on the one hand, if you have improved security, you're going to have a, a smoother, more satisfied client. You're going to have fewer help desk calls. You're going to have fewer malware infections. Um, and on the same time, you're going to be able to charge a premium to your clients for providing a, a managed security solution. Um, and then in the case of business grade file sync, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, improve the security, but also put in place a business grade sync solution that you can actually charge for. So today, uh, Deem is going to go into some details on how, to, how partners can use OpenDNS to deliver comprehensive security, productivity, um, you know, and visibility into your client networks. And then I'm going to spend some time sharing you know, how Anchor can be used um, you know, by MSPs for a business-grade sync solution. And then Matt's going to share some real-life client case studies about how he's using these two uh, services um, together in his MSP practice. So with that, let me um, give the keyboard and mouse control back to Dima, and we'll dig a little okay. further here. Okay. So let me see. Let me just make sure that I can get keyboard and mouse. There you go. Okay. So the primary service that I'm referring to when I talk about OpenDNS is Umbrella for MSPs which is our cloud-delivered security service specifically for managed service providers. And in terms of the core value of the service and really what we focus on, it's delivering security ROI. Now, the number one thing that we do is decrease costs for a managed service provider by cutting down malware cleanup time by 50 to 80%, which means not only are your customers safer, but you can service more customers with the same number of employees and become a more profitable MSP. But the other side is this increase in revenue by both being able to offer this granular per user web filtering capability and really using your security tool as a lead gen or sales opportunity source by finding these consumer applications that have no business being part of, uh, of a, a customer's uh, experience and upsell them to solutions like Anchor. And lastly, of course, improving retention by having better uptime and providing increased value and being able to report on it. When I talk about OpenDNS security, the thing that really makes us different is using predictive intelligence as opposed to reversing malware and using signatures. So we see roughly 2.5% of all the world's Internet traffic, 70 billion DNS queries per day or around a million DNS queries a second. This allows us to run them through algorithmic learning machines, detect and predict where attacks are going to be coming from, and really block this on your customers' networks and roaming devices uh, proactively as opposed to reactively once the machine is already infected or the payload has reached the endpoint. But the thing that really makes OpenES unique besides our security model is the fact that you can deploy it in minutes and protect users on or off the network. If you just point DNS to our IPs and uh, register the external IP in the dashboard, anybody that's on the network is automatically protected, including BYOD devices. But what most of our partners do, and Matt does this as well, is really deploy this lightweight agent. It's like two megs, not measurable in terms of system resources. And this adds on and off network protection and also gives us per computer granularity. This agent can be deployed using any RMM tool, and we've got pre-written scripts for most of them. And one of the unique things that happens when you deploy the agent is you can now have reports uh, showing what customers, users are doing on their work-issued machines, whether they're in the office, traveling for work, or taking that machine home and giving you that complete security and application visibility. On the application visibility side, the feature that I'm talking about specifically is our cloud service report. And this is a nice report that shows you all the cloud services that your users are using, um, what type of service it is. You can even filter down by saying, hey, just show me file sync or backup or storage or CRM and see what's going on 
across all of the endpoints as well as trends. So are people adopting certain features more? Sorry, having uh, trouble advancing the slide here. Well, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Um, once you click on a cloud service, you get this detailed view showing all of the domains that the users are going to, as well as each identity that is using. And what's important here is being able to understand whether it's the traveling salesperson, the CEO, or if it's somebody who's just connected to the guest Wi-Fi that's using these apps. And this type of visibility not only lets you get context, but also lets you present data back to the customer saying, hey, why is so-and-so uh, using Salesforce? Or Dropbox is being used by all of your executives. We need to have a deeper conversation about data security. And as you saw, this is a nice pretty report, which means you don't have to dig through log files, and it means everybody from your junior techs to your salespeople can use it without having to get deep technical understanding of log files. And it also gives you an understanding of what services are trending, and when there are password breaches, such as HipChat, LinkedIn, and Dropbox, you can use this to identify who has been using the service and who needs that proactive CIO level intervention of you need to reset your passwords and we need to make sure that you're not reusing your password in other places. So with that, I think Ted's going to go over some of the benefits of Anchor and how it works for the cloud uh, cloud delivered storage model. Right. So so I think as, as Demas showed, you know, with OpenDNS, one of the really killer apps of their solution is to give MSPs, you know, global visibility into the clients and users and the applications that users are tr are using every day, and really. In our view, um, you know that level of visibility is 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 critical for an MSP to to come in and really own the security posture of your clients and make sure that you are weeding out those security risks. And one of those security risks, as we talked about, is um, you know consumer grade sync solutions. Um, and and with with OpenDNS, you can get visibility to people using things like Dropbox or SugarSync or or Google Drive, and you know it's not enough to say, look, these applications are dangerous; they're prohibited. Really, you as an MSP, you have to also focus on the productivity and satisfaction of your clients, right? And you have to go in and say, look, um, we're going to weed out these these security risks, and we're going to use our network-based security tools like OpenDNS. We're going to use our next-generation firewall technology. We're going to use our RMM tools to make sure that we can block and uninstall and remove these various risks. But at the same time, you've got to say, look, and we've got a file sync solution that is a secure, easy to use alternative um, that's going to make your employees extremely productive. And we're not going to have to make any compromises around security and control. And so Anchor from eFolder is really, that's what MSP, our MSP partners are doing today. Is they're going out and there's they're satisfying that user demand need to be productive uh, wherever you go, um, but they're, we've swung the pendulum back, and we've, with, by working with our MSP partners, we've now got a situation where we know where the data lives, we know where users are syncing their data, we know how to uh, claw back and uninstall and remote wipe data from devices or PCs or Macs, that we've either de deemed you know shouldn't have the data, or if the employee is leaving the company, and we've got now security and control back in the network. But I think it's always it's it's I think useful at this point just to give kind of a quick overview of how the Anchor solution works. Anchor can be licensed by MSPs from eFolder in two different ways. You can either license what we call the the private cloud version of the product, where you can actually license the software and run it in your own colo environment. Alternatively, you can um, source the product in our SaaS version of the product where we include 100 gigabytes of bundled storage per user per month and all of the data will then live in the eFolder cloud in a multi-tenant public cloud infrastructure environment. 
But if you kind of just look at how the, you know, a picture always tells a thousand words. If we look at how the solution works, anchor, uh, the anchor agent, if we look at client A in this picture, you know, client A, you install the agent on the work-issued laptop. That work-issued laptop, you know, you identify which folders, um, which individual folders the, the user wants to sync to the cloud. The data gets synced to the e-folder cloud. Then all the data will in turn get synced to the different mobile devices, smartphones and tablets, or other remote PCs that the user needs. And then they've got their files with them wherever they go. At the same time, one of the other really cool capabilities of Anchor is that if that client A has an existing legacy file server in place, you as the MSP can go in there and cloud connect that file server to the Anchor service and then map uh, certain directories on the file server to team shares. Team shares are collaboration folders in the Anchor service. And then users are able to, no matter which device they're computing from, to either access data or create new content, they're able to access all of the data from the file server on the go without having to VPN back into headquarters. Um, and when they, when they um, you know, create new content, it all gets synced right back to the file server. And so you really you, you streamline collaboration and productivity in a workplace because everybody's now at more in sync. You don't have the, the age-old problems of people not using the VPN, not you know, storing their content on the file server. Everything stays in sync. So that's where the user gets the primary benefit, right? They have their content wherever they go. Employees are able to collaborate with each other more nimbly. Um, and then you, you've got, as an MSP, you've got visibility, and you can put in place security protocols on different clients. So the other thing about Anchor is it's multi-tenant, right? So it's from the ground up was designed for deployment by MSPs. So you can have a different set of security policies for client A versus client B, and you're able to you know, waterfall, you know, those security policies down to, to, to different organizations and users and, um, you know, manage your growing client base in a multi-tenant fashion, which is critical. I mean, the biggest challenge MSPs face today is really controlling your labor costs as you grow your client base and deliver more rich and robust solutions. So multi-tenancy is critical. And with Anchor, MSPs are able to monitor everything from a, from a global dashboard. You're able to do, you know, provision new users. You're able to do remote wipe tasks. You're able to generate reports. You're able to, you know, go in and audit and figure out where content has been synced to. Um, you know, you're able to do all of these things in, in a, in a, from, a, from a global perspective. So, and, and that the, ultimately the value proposition you're delivering to your clients is, is they're able to work with their content across any device with any party, um, with any kind of content without that, those compromises around security and control. And so with that, if we kind of look, you know, we, we love, you know, we love working with OpenDNS um, because we're out on the road with them doing a bunch of um, lunch and learns as well. And, and really, we love to do that because really it's, a, it's security and business grade file sync and BDR and backup all um, really work together in a seamless, um, you know, defense in depth type strategy for a client and in an MSP practice. You need all these different layers of security from email security to AV protection on the endpoints. You need, still need gateway firewalls, but you need robust network layer security delivered, delivered from OpenDNS. And then, you know, you need these other layers as well, which is you need your data backed up, you need servers protected, you need BDR, and you need to make sure wherever you're syncing data, you know where it's been synced, you've got control of it, you've got the ability to remote wipe it. So, you know, no one layer is going, you know, you're not, there will always, stuff will always go wrong, but, you, but if you have a defense in depth or a layered security approach um, with your clients, you're able to accomplish so much more in terms of ensuring security and productivity. Yeah, and just to add into to this for a second, one of the big points that I think really aligns opening this and e-folder is the understanding that we're talking about business risk management. It's not a question of specific pieces addressing specific threats. It's looking at your customers and being their advisor and being their consultant to manage risk to their business as a whole, to their data, to their users, and taking care of all of the layers to create a robust solution that puts them in a better place and you as a partner 
as that trusted advisor. That's right. And I want to, at this point in today's program, um, remind everyone to ask questions. Um, I noticed one question just came in, and let me, let me try to address that really quickly before I uh, turn the floor over to Matt. Um, but uh, Judith wants to know, how does eFolder's anchor solution compare to Box? And what I would say about Box is Box is a good product. Its, it's uh, heritage really comes out of the enterprise sync and collaboration space. But the reality is, is that Box is not built for MSPs. Um, if you're an MSP today and you deploy Box, you, you would have to have kind of standalone implementation and you know, implementations for each client, um, each end user customer. So you wouldn't have a global management dashboard. You wouldn't have you know, kind of a single pane of glass to manage the whole solution. You wouldn't be able to logically group clients and cascade security policies and settings um, down at the, at the group level. You don't get any of those benefits because Box was basically designed um, Box was designed for the enterprise, you know, so for a big company that has an IT department that's going to manage the solution on their own. And Anchor, on the other hand, was designed from the ground up for MSPs with the basic premise that an MSP will have 50 different clients. This heterogeneous client environment will have different security needs from client to client. Um, and, and you're able to go in and nimbly manage that. And as you grow the penetration of a sync solution into your client base, you know, something like Anchor helps you not only meet the end user need, but control your labor costs as you grow. So hopefully that answers your question, Judith. And with that, um, let me turn the floor over to Matt Henderson, president of Litzia, so that he can share with us a little bit about how he's deploying, um, deploying uh, OpenDNS and Anchor in his client base. Fantastic. So I want to discuss quickly um, what we're just talking about, that entire MSP perspective. Um, one of the components that we have found um, with OpenDNS and eFolder is our ability to white label the products and create our own single SKU stack. You know, when we go to our customers, we're there to make it go away and not sell little bits and pieces. And so by our being able to control that relationship with the end customer, white label it so when the customer goes in they see it as Litzia. Um, we're unable to provide the whole the whole piece. Um, for our team, these two products have been extremely easy to develop and uh, and deploy with very little hands on maintenance. Um, the uh, the installers are very easy to deploy. Uh, when the customer logs in for the first time it'll auto provision them to their individual site. Um, with the configuration that we've configured in their cloud dashboard. And so that gives us a lot of scalability, um, easy, ease to reproduce uh, our configurations. Um, and it's allowed our company to grow, I believe, our revenues more uh, quickly with less staff. Okay. So our ideal clients, they want access anywhere at any time. Um, Traditionally, you know, the VPN was, was, was the go-to de facto, uh, and we found that as cloud has been more adopted by everyone, a VPN isn't, isn't cutting the performance or the mustard, really. Um, also, in terms of uh, security, um, things like antivirus would be real thick and slow and very uh, difficult to manage and maintain with the, uh, the emerging roaming workforce. You know, we're finding people just want to work wherever they're at, whenever they want. You know, the day of people being tethered to their desk seat is, is definitely becoming not the norm. And our clients want to hire top talent. And by offering you know, a remote desktop, it's almost like the millennial generation demands it. It's now the norm. I want to be able to get to my, I want to do my job on my phone, on my tablet, on the train, on the airplane, you know, wherever they can envision working. And so we've adopted OpenDNS and eFolder because those both provide that cloud security and cloud suite and um, enterprise management, both from an MSP standpoint and from the customer standpoint. Let's see here. So 
what's what's also nice is is it's it's the scalability perspective. I mean, you pay as you go in terms of uh, a customer. Um, it's an operating expense for them. Not a huge investment. You know, they pay per seat. Um, and again, you know, we bundle this often into our entire uh, cloud suite with uh, Office 365. Okay. So I'm going to share a little bit about our backstories of how we uh, became partners with OpenDNS and eFolder. So we started with OpenDNS a few years ago, and we deployed this to our existing customer sites. Not initially from a profit revenue, or, excuse me, not actually from a revenue standpoint, but more from a, uh, a profitability standpoint. We found that as we put OpenDNS on our client systems, if they were on a flat fee structure, for example, for all you can eat, our, our ticket counts went down tremendously for uh, malware type experiences that the customers were having. So as we did that, um, over time, we were able to show the value in what we were delivering and increase our reoccurring revenue rates to those customers at a very high margin level. Um, and the benefit on top of that, initially our intention was to reduce our engineering time for break fix work and more building. I mean, I don't know you guys are engineers like to build stuff. They don't want to go fix stuff, you know. And it uh, it kind of increased our morale. Actually, it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to fix that thing again. So um, let's see. I would say, uh, you know, when I'm looking at metrics, probably over 50% of our um, malware tickets. Uh, is our reduction since we um, deployed OpenDNS. Now, one thing to remember about these solutions is you can go with the on-premise uh, option. We chose not to do that. We've gone with the umbrella solution as well as the uh, the SaaS option for eFolder because we felt that we have customers on uh, multiple coasts, and um, for us, it fit our business model. Okay, next came Anchor. So a pure of mine. Um, we were at an HTG meeting, and he's like, "You got to go check these guys out." He owns a cloud hosting company. He's like, "You got you you, you got to check out Anchor." And in eFolder's infinite wisdom, purchased Anchor, and uh, we jumped all over it because it fit a gap of uh, enterprise-based MSP uh, refined uh, file storage. Now, Anchor has a lot more than just file storage, and I think that's one of the components that we focused on. So far, um, it's a large solution stack. It just goes beyond um, just that file synchronization. I hope I don't forget anything. So, essentially, these two products together have allowed us to um, decentralize our customers' operations and uh, are very easy to manage and maintain. You know, I mean, we can we can push, change to store clients' desktops, see what the activity is, utilize. Uh, utilize their uh, real-time data to help make you know on-the-spot decision making and or reporting and or disconnecting like even a disgruntled employee you know I mean uh, who has uh, data on their local machine at synchronized you can remove it it'll disappear you know with these solutions so okay so let me go to some customer testimonials here um, so we have a, a, a customer here locally that uh, uh, makes conductive plastic. Pretty cool. I thought it'd be a fun one to share. Um, they're inventors. They have offices in four or five states. You know, they have people all over the place because they want they want the best people. Um, they're working with the auto industry, um, etc. And so they need to protect their IP. They have inventors who like to have things localized. It's kind of like their little preciouses, you know. It's like, oh, my precious, and they don't share it. And so through this, uh, through, excuse me, through OpenDNS, we've been able to, to both protect their, their IP assets, ensure, they're also publicly traded, I left that out, to ensure their soft compliancy. Um, as well as um, understand what applications are being utilized. Okay. Um, 
Now, as things have progressed, they're the typical small business server customer. Okay. So we've gotten them into the cloud. They're already using email in the cloud. That was the first step. But now, what about files? What about security? What about protecting that property? What about backups? So that's where eFolder pops in. Um, through, the, through the solution, we're able to enable file synchronization for both the east and west coast, uh, much more efficient than a VPN or um, other competing solutions, which I'll discuss in the second company review. Um, performance, people think about cloud sharing performance is fantastic. Again, we are using the SaaS model, um, and I feel it's worked great. Okay. Another thing, too, for us is by going to these cloud solutions, and we have customers that are geographically independent, um, it reduces our support responsibility. I mean, I not going to have my staff up at 5 a.m. to support the East Coast, which um, by having these dependable cloud solutions in place, it, it offsets that. Let me, let me rephrase this. Having cloud solutions that work offsets that responsibility. Um, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So Matt, I guess in this case, I mean, yeah. I'm just looking at a couple of the questions that have come in. Were yeah. these, were, what was this client doing, the plastics manufacturer, what were they doing um, before for kind of remote access and sharing of content? I mean, what what, what was the state of the <coughs> internal collaboration? I mean, if there were pain points there, what, what, what were they? What were they doing and, and how did it change? Okay. So this customer would use email typically, sending documents to multiple people. And or VPN. VPN, however, was sometimes used, sometimes not used. Management also had concerns about people, staff, hoarding information on their machines. You know, one of the things that ePolder does do is you can back up workstations. Um, so by doing this, you know, we've consolidated all of their communications and into a cloud synchronized solution. I mean, we got some people using Dropbox. And this is a general, this is you know, generalized uh, comment. When we go and review OpenDNS's report, their cloud usage report, even people still will try to use Dropbox, even though Anchor's in place. But we can say, ah, uh, uh, you know, you own that Dropbox account, not the company. And we, we can use that as a tool and also use it as a sales tool. I mean, I can go in and look at OpenDNS and say, gee, you got nine people using Dropbox, a bunch of people using Google Docs. And it provides a good gatekeeper for compliancy. You know, hey, you, you can't be doing that on your own. Right. So, so, so the kind of the question? Like, yeah, sure. So the before picture is people were hoarding information on on their machines, they were refusing to use the VPN to maybe check stuff into a file server. They were over relying on emails, ways to trans transfer files, and yep. so that was kind of the before picture. And then they were, you know, the management was concerned that there was critical content sitting on people's machines that maybe wasn't protected. And so you, you not only with Anchor for sync, but also the built-in backup capabilities, you can put in an extra layer of defense there that corporate content gets protected. So that was the before picture, and then what's the after picture look like? I mean, how, how are, are you using team shares? Um, you know, what's the, been the feedback from the actual workforce and the users? Sure. So typically people want their own share, okay? Uh, they have their own private shares for backup purposes mainly. And they also selectively backup files on their workstations, and that also adds for ease of remote support and recoverability for us. I mean, we're able to support customers in a greater geographic area due to having their data available. Also, one other component I didn't mention, um, because of what they do, there's a lot of large files. You know, they send drawings and what have you. Um, Anchor also has a uh, Outlook add-in, which will allow uh, large files to Links to large files stored on the Anchor location. 
And so that, that, that solves a problem for many customers. It also could, we haven't done this, but it could be an upsell. You know, and a lot of people are willing to pay for that kind of functionality. Um, so the end result, centralized, compliant, um, managed, um, low for now for our company, uh, greater revenue. You know, I mean, um, you know, an all-you-can-eat customer calling on VPN slowness costs us money. Right. And it reduces right. our margins. And if we eliminate those those types of challenges, we make mm -hmm. more money, the customer's happier, and everybody wins. Okay. So that's well, what I want to Yeah. So shall we change gears to the, the uh, client number two, a physical security yes. firm? Yes. Okay. So client number two, they provide uh, video cameras and high-level security. They're basically an MSP for security. Um, so they will put at a customer site the, their security server, um, which is actually a server, that retrieves and records live events. And then that uh, the server will either back up or through a VPN go to their go to their office. Okay. So we have a component there where we want to make sure that that server that they're putting on, on their customer sites is secure also because they're a security company. So that's where open DNS comes in nicely is that we ensure we add that extra thin layer of protection for their uh, their camera system. Okay. So that was a success in that component with them. Uh, we we early adopted into uh, the Microsoft Office 365 part and sold them on SharePoint on the huge file storage that SharePoint would offer through uh, the, um, whatever it's called, their synchron file synchronization software, uh, OneDrive. Um, unknown to us, uh, we, we found that there were some challenges. Uh, with that solution, such as synchronization not working, uh, file limits per folder. We had to go create all these new directories. And so instead of having one nice, clean folder structure, every single, uh, there were many subfolders of folders because there was a file limit, the number of files you could put in the folder. So customer is unhappy. Um, I, I objected. I was like, you know what? We're going to go with eFolder. And we put eFolder in. And this has solved so many other challenges. So this customer also has a, a roaming Salesforce, okay? And so they, they use iPads as their device and sometimes Windows tablets. Um, maybe access anytime, anywhere because they use this for their, as their quoting tool. So they can update live pricing. They're kind of old school. They use Excel, you know, and they use a couple other products. But they can update their back. I know, I know. Um, but you know, through through this technology, they can update pricing on the fly, um, and also as one other component I didn't mention the previous one, um, with uh, eFolder, they also do a localized file server synchronization. That's a unique differentiator over the other products. So they actually have all their files on their LAN as well, and they can access those files. But those files on the LAN are also cloud synchronized. Um, Huge differentiator for us. Performance benefit, right? That's absolutely a client benefit. It's also a benefit for us because uh, we have a happier customer, and they can access the you know land files at land speeds, but also have those files synced outside. And also just file locking, you know, I mean, for, it, customers thrilled. And it fulfills their ability to hire top talent because they support. You know, um, I top technology. You know, I mean, they can grab any device anywhere, and these solutions work. So, um, let's see right. what else they don't have got. to carry their their UTM firewall in their briefcase, and nor do they need to tunnel back. Especially if they're, I imagine a lot of them are doing this from hotels, from customer sites that may have a DSL line. All sorts of locations that traditional solutions would, and especially VPNs, would be absolutely miserable in, right? Uh, let's say cellular is real common. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding. I mean, you know, they'll have a tablet with, with, as we saw earlier, a Verizon, you know, connection. 
Mm -hmm. try, try sync into a file on your LAN or VPN on a tablet in the middle of some warehouse. You know, I mean, just challenging. And also, uh, <laughs> they have the comfort with OpenDNS on the edge for all their clients' cameras. Um, let's see. You know, I mean, essentially, those are the two stories that we have. Uh, oh, so let's, let's move forward. And um, I think one of the more really interesting things that we've talked about before this uh, webcast, Matt, is really this how the two solutions have changed your sales cycle mm. and have added a lot of value. And I thought this is a great example of, of not just protecting customers, but aiding your sales team's business. Well, absolutely. I mean, we eat on dog food. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> our company, as a user of both products, uh, is able to sell anywhere, anytime, demonstrate the value. The reporting is there to show it. I mean, it's like these products sell themselves, at least for us. I, I, can, I can say, gee, you can't deny the data. Right. The data is saying you have employees that are using Dropbox, and I know that you don't have enterprise Dropbox. So who owns that data? Uh, and then it kind of sells itself. Okay, well that leads into, ta-da, you know. So. So what has that done for the sales cycle? Instead of just going in as a, I have a new new offering. <laughs> it's a competitive advantage in that we offer. Uh, a unique solution that solves a problem. I mean, that, that's, that's what we're there for. We're there to solve business problems. We're finding that our company is becoming more of a business solution company than a technology company. We don't have to go manage exchange servers anymore. We don't have to manage, uh, you know, open DS. We don't have to manage a file storage. It's all cloud hosted. So our engineers are able to invest their time in higher revenue generating activities. So we're building more than fixing. And in terms of sales cycle, um, well, the proof is in the pudding. We grew by 65% last year. So I feel we've been able to do more with less because of embracing some of these cloud solutions. Awesome. Yeah, but I think I think you know just to make one comment, Matt. I mean, I think this is one thing we're we're always trying to impress upon our our partners is is really it, to go out. You, you've got to help paint the picture of the the hidden problem that the client doesn't really even know they have. I mean, there's really. I mean, in the, I think in the examples you gave, there was there was latent pain. There was like. You know, you had a management team on the one hand who was worried that all this sensitive corporate data wasn't being, sh you know, used and fully, you know, leveraged by the entire organization. That collabor collaboration and productivity was suffering. Uh, you know, on the one hand, on the other, you had users who were obviously frustrated by the kind of, you know, uh, you know, cumbersome experience they were having with sharing files and and collaborating with others. But then the other, I mean. Many many business owners today just do not have a good idea of the significant risks that are out there to their data privacy with the rapid adoption of all these consumer grade cloud services, and even yeah. sometimes the departmental, the unauthorized departmental adoption of certain applications. Right? Sometimes you have, uh, you know, the head of marketing will just decide to go start using X Y Z thing, and then all of a sudden you've got this new data silo that you didn't even know about. So. Um, I just think this ex the examples you gave are great because they show how you're using these two services in concert to use OpenDNS to get better visibility to where these problems are, and then you've got a you've got a business grade alternative you can come in to solve the problem. So, so this is great. So, um, you know, everybody on the phone, what I want to do is you know be mindful of our time and just get to Q and A here because we just have about eight minutes left, but. Um, just to kind of comment on, you know, what's the ROI of using these two solutions in concert together? You know, so first of all, Litzy is able to go out there and deliver business grade sync and collaboration solutions to their clients at 70% gross margins. So, um, you know, somebody asked earlier, you know, well, what's the difference between Anchor and Box? You know, and I, and I gave some kind of technical MSP feature specific 
um, comments. But the other thing is business model, and Matt touched on this a bit, that both, but both OpenDNS and eFolder's solution set can be branded by the partner. And then the other important thing is that there's extreme flexibility in terms of how the partner goes out and prices and package, packages the offering. And in the case of Anchor, um, you know, partners can license it from eFolder for five to ten dollars wholesale per user per month, and in the in the SaaS version of the product, um, with a hundred gigabytes in the cloud per user per month included. So for five to ten dollars, based upon unit volume, and then you can turn around and charge fifteen, twenty, or twenty-five dollars a user for a business grade sync solution. And so Litzy is able to go out there and drive seventy percent gross margins. And then on the on Open DNS. You know, as you build this growing installed base of managed users and a managed service practice, if you can significantly reduce the number of tickets, security incidents, and labor you're having to invest in a client, that's where you start growing a lot of cash flow and profitability. So, um, you know, the, the beautiful thing before we just go into Q and A here is that both OpenDNS and eFolder are focused as companies on improving security. Um, improving security, improving productivity for the workforce, and helping MSPs profit. And it's a shared focus by both companies um, on this global value proposition. And, um, and and David, you want to make a couple con couple concluding comments here? Yeah, I guess I was just going to say the the other part. So it's improving the client security, increasing productivity, and profit. In this changing world where employees are, as Matt said, not tied to their desk, work is a thing you do. It's not a place you go. So being able to use the predictive security in places where the firewall doesn't protect, where signature-based tools are falling short, helps increase uh, profitability. But this productivity is on both sides with OpenDNS, both on the MSP side of being able to service more customers with the same number of people and also on the customer side where they don't have to tunnel back to a firewall which is probably also still using signature based protection um, to get any of the security benefits and finally that profitability is baked into both solutions as well both from a decrease in, uh, in expenditures and an increase in effective bill rate. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, eFolder, our, our view of this is, you know, if you're deploying a, you know, business-grade sync solution, um, you've got, you've helped, the, you've helped the client get their data back under control. You know where the data lives, you know where it's being synced, you know how to do a remote wipe, you know how to deprovision a, a former employee uh, when and if needed, um, you know how to, uh, you know, keep control of your data. The users are productive and happy. I think in the two examples Matt gave, I mean, you, you, you know, workforce satisfaction is one of the biggest challenges every business is faced, every business faces today. Why is there a phenomenon around consumerization of IT? Because there's a lot of great technology and employees want to be highly productive. It's incredibly frustrating when you have barriers to that. And so with something like Anchor, uh, users can use any variety of smartphone or tablet or computing device that they, they want to use and they have access to their content at their fingertips. That makes people very empowered uh, because they're productive. And then, you know, by deploying a solution like this, partners are able to meet all these robust needs of clients, um, you know, and, and do it at a premium, um, which it, it drives profit. And one of the common things, we love to go to market with, with OpenDNS because we share these common MSP attributes the services are billed by the month, partners get volume pricing. As you bring more clients or seats or users or deployments to the table, your pricing gets better. You're able to manage your seats on demand. It's highly agile and flexible as you grow, and you're able to do, manage everything in a multi-tenant framework. Um, I'd like to uh, um, you know, invite anyone on the line. If you are interested, go to opendns.com or go to efolder.net to further engage with our sales teams to get a business uh, relationship started. And then finally, what I'd like to do is thank Matt Henderson for uh, joining us today to share his experience with both of these products. Matt, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Okay, and uh, Dima, thanks a lot for uh, joining us as well. And um, this is uh, 
Ted Holsey with eFolder. Thanks to everyone for joining us and spending some time on today's eFolder and OpenDNS webinar. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.